Hi, welcome to this latest edition in my Facts About series. And today I'm going to be sharing 25 interesting facts about Catherine Parr, who was, of course, Henry VIII's sixth wife and who also didn't get executed or have anything too horrible happen to her. So let's kick off with number one. Catherine's father, Sir Thomas Parr, was a favoured courtier early in Henry VIII's reign, and her mother, Maud Green, was one of Queen Catherine of Aragon's ladies. So there you go, two facts in one there. Number two, Catherine was named after Henry VIII's first wife, Catherine of Aragon. Number three, after Sir Thomas Parr's death, Catherine's mother was in charge of her children's education and she gave them an excellent education. Her cousin Cuthbert Tunstall, who became Bishop of London, was able to advise her. Number four, Catherine was fluent in Italian, French and Latin and was interested in medicine too. Number five, Catherine's mother negotiated for Catherine to marry Henry Scroop, son and heir of Lord Scroop of Bolton in the early 1520s. But Lord Scroop wasn't keen on the idea. Number six, Catherine was married twice before she married King Henry VIII. In 1529, when she was about 17, she married 21-year-old Edward Burrough, son of Thomas Burrough, third Baron Borough of Gainsborough. Edward sadly died in 1533, and in 1534, Catherine married John Neville, third Baron Latimer of Snape Castle in Yorkshire, becoming stepmother to his two young children. Number seven. Catherine and her stepchildren were taken hostage at Snape Castle in early 1537 during the Pilgrimage of Grace Rebellion when the rebels were concerned that Baron Latimer would betray them to the king. Number eight, Catherine was appointed to serve Mary, eldest daughter of Henry VIII, as one of her ladies in 1542. And it's while she was serving Mary at court that Catherine caught the king's eye. Number nine. Following Baron Latimer's death in March 1543, Catherine wanted to marry Thomas Seymour. But when the king proposed marriage, she believed it was God's will for her to marry the king instead. She married the king on the 12th of July 1543. Number ten. Catherine got on well with all three of her royal stepchildren, Mary, Elizabeth and Edward. Number 11, Catherine was appointed Regent General when Henry VIII was campaigning in France in 1544. Number 12, in 1546, there was a plot to bring down Catherine. Those involved in the plot were Bishop Stephen Gardner, Sir Thomas Risley, Sir Richard Rich and William Paget. Fortunately for Catherine, Anne Askew, who was tortured on the rack before being executed for heresy, refused to name the Queen as a heretic. And Catherine was warned of her impending arrest by royal physician Dr Wendy. She was able to see the king and reconcile with him, explaining that she'd only argued religion with him to take his mind off the pain from his leg and that she would never presume to instruct him in matters of religion. Number 13. Catherine was a patron of art and music. She acted as a patron to the Bassano family of musicians, scholar Nicholas Udall, and artists Lucas and Susanna Horembu, William Scroats, John Betts, Master John, and Lavina Tierlink, as well as jewellers, engravers, printers, and publishers. Number 14. 
Catherine had expected to become regent for Edward VI on Henry VIII's death, but her hopes were dashed and Edward Seymour took the reins as Lord Protector. Number 15. As well as publishing Prayers or Meditations and The Lamentation of a Sinner, Catherine worked with Archbishop Cranmer on the King's Primer, which included the Archbishop's work and a translation by Catherine. That was published in 1545. But she also worked with Nicholas Udall on Paraphrases upon the New Testament, which included translations by Udall, Catherine, Thomas Key and Princess Mary of Erasmus's work. It was published in early 1548. Number 16. Catherine secretly married Thomas Seymour in around May 1547, so not long after the King's death. He died in January 1547. Number 17. Catherine's household as Dowager Queen included her stepdaughter Elizabeth and her husband Thomas's ward Lady Jane Grey. Number 18. Catherine's new husband, Thomas Seymour, began acting rather inappropriately with her stepdaughter Elizabeth, behaviour that we'd call sexual abuse today. And Catherine is described as restraining Elizabeth while Seymour cut Elizabeth's gown into a hundred pieces. Catherine eventually put a stop to the behaviour by sending Elizabeth away. Number 19. Catherine had one child, a daughter Mary by Thomas Seymour. Mary was born on the 30th of August 1548, but sadly Catherine died at the age of 36 on the 5th of September 1548 of what was said to have been childbed fever. Number 20. Lady Jane Grey acted as the chief mourner at Catherine's funeral at the chapel at Sudley Castle. Number 21. Catherine's resting place was lost when the chapel fell into ruin, but her remains were found in 1782 by ladies visiting the castle, and later that summer her coffin was dug up. Her remains were perfectly preserved, but obviously affected when air got to them. I'll give you a link to my video on Catherine's death, which explains how her remains were treated rather badly, and how they were reinterred, exhumed again, and then reinterred. They were eventually laid to rest in the chapel. Number 22. A tooth, locks of hair, and a piece of the seer cloth used to wrap her remains can be seen on display in a glass case at Sudley Castle. Number 23. It's not known what happened to Catherine's daughter, Mary. It's assumed that she died young as she disappears from the records after her second birthday. Number 24. Catherine's motto as queen was to be useful in all I do. And I'm pretty sure she was. And finally, number 25. It is a myth that Catherine was a glorified nursemaid to Henry VIII. He didn't need his wife to nurse him. He had physicians and staff for that. Do check out the description for this video where I'll give you that link uh, so you can find out all about what happened to Catherine's remains. It's quite a long story. You can subscribe to this channel by clicking round about there. You can hit the bell to be notified as these videos go live and you can give me a like and leave me a comment. Thank you for joining me and I'll see you very soon. Bye bye.